Salutations, Utopians. Hope all is well in your world. Global here. Wanted to recap this uh, big-time blockbuster trade that happened right after the Minnesota Lynx won the uh, WNBA Commissioner's Cup, fourth um, ever Commissioner's Cup at that. Congratulations to Nafisa Collier defeating uh, the New York Liberty. Um, right after the game, a different team in New York that plays basketball, the Knicks, made a deal with the Brooklyn Nets, which we I never thought in my wildest dreams the New York Knicks and Brooklyn Nets would ever do a deal together. But their timelines are just so much dramatically uh, polar opposite of each other that um, it just made no sense for Brooklyn to keep on posturing like they were rivals of any sort. Uh, Mikel Bridges, I, from my understanding, made a formal request to end up going to New York, and it happened. Um, and shortly after that, I first and foremost, it's amazing to me because Brooklyn got drafted a King's Ransom to send Kevin Durant to Phoenix to get Mikel Bridges. And now they're getting another King's Ransom in draft capital to get Mikel Bridges uh, sent out of town. So he single-handedly is responsible in more ways than not uh, for Brooklyn's ability to restock their capital and their investment portfolio for the future, which many are already anticipating the Cooper Cups, Cooper flag swings stakes uh, is now in full effect. Um, shortly after that, Brooklyn and Sean Marks sent their uh, partial capital to Houston to get their 2025, 2025 unprotected first round pick. So uh, back and be in control of their destiny um, I don't know where the rumors are that the, the Rockets are going to leverage that to get Kevin Durant. There's no reason in under the sun why the Ishbia group is aggressively psychotic as they are would go into a rebuild a year later. That just made no sense. Furthermore, it makes no sense to me the rumors that the Knicks are still willing to re-sign uh, OG Ananobi. That's foolish talk. Uh, Mikel Bridges is a small forward. They were putting OG as small forward. They already have money tied up in defense. And so Josh Hart, who's a shooting guard, but can play a little bit of power forward. He plays one through four long short. Uh, 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 Deuce McBride. You got Burks, who's probably going to return on a veteran minimum, paired with Jalen Brunson, who's on a 100 mil contract. I don't see the Knicks paying OG Ananobi. You don't need OG Ananobi to go against the Boston Celtics. Okay, there's only one basketball, and really they are the direct beneficiaries of a nice, friendly schedule due to Giannis's injury, due to Julius Randle uh, getting injured in the Indiana series and having to face a very wet behind the ears, very green Indiana Pacers roster. So to me, this I don't know why they're talking about OG Ananobi still a possibility while the same day NBA Central revealed that he's interested in trying to seek, he's got at least one table, one deal on the table for $233 million. That makes no sense to me. Uh, I thought something like this would happen. Uh, you can check me out on Twitter X, global, GL, the number eight, B-A-L underscore sports. Um, I, I, I thought, okay, they're gonna, you know, pass on OG because OG's agent is the president of operations, Leon Rose's son. And so um, I know there's there's something going on. I just can't put my finger on it. They're a very militant, quiet group of people. And you know that there's definitely, but you one thing you can know is they, they definitely are working something behind the scenes. I remember last year when they got Josh Hart, DiVincenzo, thinking to myself, you already got Quickly and Barrett. Why would you do that? Because Quickly and Barrett are on the way out. They are trying to flush out that roster and any residue from the Scott Perry administration who did a commendable job preparing the Knicks to be where they are today. The Knicks have identified the Villanova connection as the cap in the CBA shrinks. You're going to have to find incentives to get guys in order uh, to, to buy into the greater good in order to win a championship. And what the Knicks did was identify the Villanova connection is Mikel Bridges, is John Hart, is Jalen Brunson on the level of um, Jason Tatum, 
you know, Jokic, maybe, maybe not. But guess what? That chemistry is a metric that can't be formulated when creating uh, a championship environment. Tim Duncan, Tom Brady, these guys all take pay cuts. Championship teams take pay cuts and make sacrifices. And with the Knicks and that Villanova connection, that is how you get your team to bring in four guys at the price of what Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are going to cost. The goal now has to be, one, Isaiah Hartenstein, two, Julius Randle. O.G. Onanobi is an afterthought to me. And I, I don't know why the discourse is OG's is good or better than Mikel Bridges. No, Mikel Bridges is better than OG. Do I think Mikel Bridges is as good as they tried to make him out to be? Some people, no. But, he, I mean, he's not Kevin Durant. But at the same time, make no mistake about it, Mikel Bridges is an upgrade from OG on an OB. You got to have guys for the Kevin Durants the Jason Tatums. This is what the Knicks have been lacking, how they got sent home by Miami and, Jay, and, and uh, Jimmy Butler. So watching this unfold right now, the Knicks are handling business, but Julius Randle is absolutely essential and even more essential is Isaiah Hartenstein. Something I want to point out, Houston is definitely still in the market to make some moves now. And I think with that acquisition of the Brooklyn Nets picks, I never thought Kevin Durant was going to be it, but I still have a long shot belief system that it might be Giannis, Jimmy Butler could come over from Miami along with Jason Terry. You know, Houston can send Isan, Tariq, uh, Tariq Isan, Jake Lockdale, and Fred Van Fleet. Van Fleet and Terry Rozier are the same age group and Rozier has familiarity with Ime Adoka, who I know is out for blood now, and uh, formerly of the Boston Celtics. Um, and so you get Butler at small forward next to uh, uh, Dylan Brooks, and then you put Terry Rozier at the one. You have a serious, intense squad there that can make some noise. And you, again, that's the intangibles. That is the a spirit of the team, a metric that can't be measured. Houston has to do something outside the box, though, in order to compete because the West is just too stacked. Um, but they just got a little bit more dangerous, and they might be a bigger winner right now than even Brooklyn or the Knicks, uh, depending on – well, not bigger than the Knicks. The Knicks are, are now – position to slowly but surely they're on trajectory to become a dynasty because their window of players are 25 to 28 they have a good four to five year window to really run up a dynasty and at least three p and with the chemistry and everything about them they are definitely box office it's very exciting what's going on right now in new york um they've done a phenomenal job uh i'm trying to make sure that i've covered all bases that pretty much concludes everything though Watch out. The Knicks are here. They are moving like a fine-tuned machine, and they move in silence. And congrats to the Knicks today. Uh, Brooklyn is on trajectory to continue to do what they're supposed to, and Houston is on a major rebound. Don't be surprised if they even get involved in the James Harden sweepstakes also, because remember, I don't see James Harden um, re-signing with the Clippers the way Lawrence Frank is talking about the CBA agreement. And James is feeling like he's been shysted out of some money. So the Houston no state tax thing could be major. I'll try to do better next time, Utopians Global. Out.